Uh, that might be the that might be the first Mila Jovovich commander that I've actually heard inside World of Tanks. I still haven't assigned her to a crew, so sorry if you're getting distracted at the start of this battle. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, how are you all doing? I hope you're all fantastic on this fine Tuesday. And today, we have the pleasure of watching Cracky Bazna playing in their Tier 10 British medium tank. This is the Centurion Action 10. The Centurion Action 10 was recently buffed significantly to a point where it is now the, the second best performing medium tank, both with regards to damage and also with regards to win ratio. The only vehicle that is still doing better than this tank is the CS-63. And I think the reason why the CS-63 is doing better is because it's the kind of tank that only the hardcore meta players are playing. Uh, when I say meta, I would argue that it's more of a case that the CS-63 is widely used in Onslaught and Clan Wars as to why that vehicle is also doing so well in the random queue. It, I, I'd almost argue that the regular player is going to do better in this, the Centurion Action 10, than they would do in the CS-63. Because they're probably going to get confused with the CS-63 speed, use the turbo mode and then have bad gun handling, and not know about what positions to take the tank into. But that's why the CS-63 is so dominant. Because it's, that, it's the fastest tank. And quite often in World of Tanks, it's about dominating the early positions to then be able to snowball the battle, or more importantly, to deny those positions to your opponents. There are quintessential positions that you will learn as you go through your, your World of Tanks career. Usually they're either hills, right? Like hill on mines, or maybe the hill on tundra. Those kind of situations where the, a tank like the CS-63 can just take it and dominate it. But the Centurion Action 10, while it isn't the fastest, doesn't have the best damage, doesn't have the best alpha damage, doesn't have the best gun depression, doesn't have all of those. Since Wargaming have buffed this vehicle, it has enough strength in all of those areas to now be, as I said, the second best. So, Cracky Bazna here is going to show you an absolute master class or a master display of raw firepower. They are packing Bond Vent, Bond, Bond Gun Rammer, and Bond Vertical Stabilizers on the vehicle. And in addition to that, they're also running a Rammer Directive. And so you're going to see a crazy amount of shots got it towards their opponents. And with a fantastic selection of ammunition on the Centurion Action 10, with great APCR rounds, with decent penetration and awesome shell velocity, phenomenal high explosive anti-tank rounds, which have better shell velocity than most tanks regular rounds do, as well as 330 millimeters of pen. And this thing is just got everything that it needs. And that's not also taking into account the Hesh rounds that are available on this vehicle that have 105 millimeters of pen and 480 alpha damage instead of 390 so you can use those to rip apart the lightly armored tanks. And so, when you've got 2,900 base damage per minute and you're using a gun ram of vents and a rammer directive, you know you've got some firepower at your disposal. And Cracky Bansner is going to need that firepower to have any chance of getting through this, this game. It's always crazy to me when you see power players like Cracky Bazna go and absolutely blaze up a fairly good game without losing a single hit point, making good use of the different rounds and also the good knowledge of the way that those bushes work over towards the H1 area. I didn't think they were actually as thick as that. It really shows that if, you, if you're significantly behind them and you don't have the worst camera rating, that you are able to get shots through against your opponents. But Cracky Bazna realizing that uh, there's no real point of being over there anymore. And instead that their team needs some help being able to uh, get rid of the Moistin and also getting rid of the Centurion 7-1 has relocated towards the middle of this map. This is where just the heat rounds are monstrous. Just like that. Another couple of rounds against the Moistin, totaling it up to four rounds now against that tier 9 German heavy tank. And you can quickly see how when Wargaming buffed this vehicle to have not only masterful damage per minute, but also to have really good gun handling. And when you add it on to vertical stabilizers, wow, that bloom when you're moving isn't even bad. This was like the, almost the mega buff of mega buffs. I, I, it, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to complain. As somebody who l likes the Centurion Action 10 over the years, the only downside now is the vehicle does feel so meta that you almost feel like you have to do really good in it. Whereas previously there was no pressure and so it was nice when you would kind of surprise your opponents. Now, everyone's playing it, they know how to play against it, and also you feel bad unless you're you're dominating inside it. Alright, so in this kind of a scenario, it's, it's just amazing me that 
Cracky Vazner is up to 5,800 damage dealt, and yet their team is still down by 4,000 hit points and and a frag. Wow, Cracky nearly, nearly lost most of their remaining hit points there against the Object 704's gold round. But luckily, the armor on this tank, it's definitely not great on the hull, but one of the highlights of the tank is that the hull is actually angled in here. It kind of comes in like this. So this means that you can over-angle the side armor on the Centurion Action 10 and be able to get away with murder. And the turret, the turret on this tank, it's really only useful when you are using your gun depression, so don't expect it to uh, to be like other, some other hull down tanks, like your Soviet vehicles, where you can kind of just expose the turret even if you aren't using your gun depression. When you are, however, the vehicle's pretty good, unless they're firing high explosive anti-tank rounds, and then even then, the forehead of this vehicle, which is so big it might as well be uh, considered to be more of a five head on this vehicle. Did just did the gun just go down as I, as I throwed some shade at the Centurion Action 10? I'm sorry, I'm sorry Centurion Action 10. This vehicle always reminds me of the old FV4202, which used to be the tier 10 medium tank back in the day as well. That FV4202, it wasn't very good, um, even when it first came out compared to all of the other vehicles. And I think the Centurion Action 10 was a great replacement for it. But all of those years went by with no one actually actually bothering with the Centurion Action 10, because you'd probably be better to play something like an SDB-1. But it has been quite nice to see these vehicles doing oh so well with the big buffs recently. And considering that it's only gone to second place, and its win ratio still isn't that far away from third and fourth place, I, I feel like Wargaming kind of got the buff about right with the Centurion Action 10, unlike the Amex M454, which received monster buffs and then became so overpowered in the game. Wow, look at the nimble nature of this British medium tank over the ridges with its great power to weight ratio. But oh gosh, Cracky, don't choke now. You managed to uh, hit the ridge line there and not the hull of, or should I say, the structure of the Hori 3. Which, as you'll know from my uh, one of my latest videos, is arguably now the best tank destroyer in the game. Okay, just gotta hope that it doesn't have quite as good of a rate of fire as you. Beautiful. Cracky gets to maintain all of their 1,600 hit points, just shredding that Hori 3 with four rounds in. And this is just medium tank firepower. Heavy tanks can't really do this. Tank destroyers can, but they just don't have the flexibility, as you just saw. And this is just outrageous potential of playing your medium tanks, and nothing can quite scratch that medium tank itch for just overpowering your opponents with raw firepower, while also still maintaining, fle maintaining flexibility. So, Cracky Bazna decides to not actually reload a Hesh round there. I think an Intuition Switch would have been a, a much better use of their ammunition. But when the Centurion Action 10 carries 68 rounds of ammunition with 2, 000, well, 26,000 potential damage, you don't really have to worry about that too much. And with 14 heat rounds left in this tank, even though Cracky has been firing quite a lot of high explosive anti-tank rounds, they shouldn't be too concerned. All right, through the upper hull there of the moisture, but unluckily a low roll leaves them on 37 hit points. I really hope that isn't going to come back to haunt Cracky later on in this battle, and it might do because they're down by three tanks, as well as also still being down by 3,000 hit points. Can you believe doing 8,600 damage while only having received one shot, one penetrating shot from the enemy team? This is just an absolute tour de force, a performance of the year, arguably inside the Centurion Action 10, with just using like the raw firepower this vehicle has. I love that Cracky is mostly using the correct ammunition for the job here, realizing that maybe they need all of those heat rounds for the Tortoise and the Object 704 and the Moistion. And so those intuition switches, not only can they save you credits, but they can also allow you to use APCR at a time when you've got higher chance to be able to pen with APCR than you would do with heat. Amazing that even with the gun handling buff and the fact that Cracky is using vent and a Bond vertical stabilizer that some of these shells are still going wayward. Showing immense control over the ridge line, they bounce a standard round this time from the Object 704 off the forehead of this vehicle. But ooh, that was a bit of a misplay. Should have aimed slightly bit more to the right against the Object 704. And with 35 seconds left, and a Centurion 710 who's come back to put another round into Cracky. This is a tense situation. Okay, what's the play here? Finish off the Centurion 71. Oh my word, mental there in their Yank Panzer 100 actually does the dirty work, and Cracky finds the player who has most of the cap 
points there. The Charfuji 4 getting 72 defense points, putting another one inside the Object 704, and Cracky is now in a 1 versus 5 scenario, which they quickly change into a 1 versus 4. Okay, so this Charfuji 4, are they going to be reloading now? Are they not going to be reloading now? Cracky really needs to be aggressive here. I don't think they can pen it. Hesh there against the turret of the Char, so they're probably going to have to keep using those APCR rounds. But there's the Tortoise, and the APCR round bounces off the Tortoise there. Painful bounce there. Cracky now loads Heat rounds, of which they've only got four rounds left. Make that three rounds left, and with the Tortoise on 1,116 hit points, they're going to have to hope they hit every single one of their remaining Heat rounds against this Tortoise. Okay, there's the first. Tortoise now down to 707. That's almost guaranteed unless two amazingly low rolls here. Final heat round in the tank now. The Tortoise being aggressive over this ridge line. Even their durability device not giving them enough hit points now to be able to fend off Cracky's pure aggression, the Centurion Action 10. And now a 1 versus 5 becomes a 1 versus 3. But oh gosh, Cracky is forced out with a T55A behind them. They put one round into the Char Future 4 and they. That's it so fast? I was just getting started. Oh, come on, Mila. This, what do you mean you were just getting started? This was 13,000 damage in a Centurion Action 10. And unfortunately, at the end there, the enemy team just applied too much pressure. With the Moistion putting 444 damage in from the side there, it did come back to haunt them. And a low health T55A applying some pressure. This was just such a tough situation at the end of the game. Arguably with hindsight, and look, it would you'd have to be almost like a robot with the way that you would play this. Maybe turning around and dealing with the one-shot T55A would have been the correct play. But how was Cracky to know that the Moistion was coming across? And, you know, you've got to apply pressure to an autoloader. Because if you turn around and you deal with something else, unless the autoloader is a complete noob, they're going to come around and apply pressure to you. And while the Char Future 4 doesn't have the best of intraclip reloads, it's still got more than enough to apply the pain to Cracky that would suggest that they wanted to finish off the auto-loading French tank rather than dealing with the T-55A. Ouch, man. If there had been maybe a fire on Amarak or just not a bounce against the Char, possibly they could have been able to get through this one. Can you believe 13,000 damage was not enough to win this game of World of Tanks. That was literally half the enemy team's hit points. This is kind of the high caliber of high calibers inside World of Tanks. And it's an absolute heartbreak that Cracky Basner was le left needing to do more even at the end of this stellar gameplay. So interestingly enough, this wasn't an ace tanker for the Centurion Action 10, which surprises me considering that Cracky Basner would have definitely got courageous resistance from having those hero medals, and I would have easily thought the 1,546 base would be enough to get an ace in any tier 10 tank, let alone the Centurion Action 10. In addition to this, they get a Confederate medal for damaging at least six opponents that were subsequently killed by their allies. And you know, when you've done this, including getting four kills, that you've had a, a monster round of World of Tanks, defend a medal for protecting the cap circle with over 100 base defense points and a tank sniper medal for doing most of that at long range. And including the blind fires that Cracky Basner put in here, this was 13,695 damage, which is the highest damage that anyone has ever done that has been uploaded to the What Replays website in the Centurion Action 10, which just makes it even more preposterous that this was not a win for Cracky Basner. So, Cracky Basner, what is there to say? You pretty much were the team here, doing more damage than the rest of your team combined in this replay. Congratulations to you on one of the greatest damage totals of all time. And it's a travesty that this wasn't enough to win this game of World of Tanks. So, Cracky, thank you so much for uploading your replay to the What Replays website for the community to enjoy. I thoroughly did, which is why I wanted to make a YouTube video on it today. And I hope all of you enjoyed the video. If you did, man, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Tuesday the 6th of June for the 79th anniversary of D-Day, there are special Twitch drops enabled where you can come and get the Overlord style, as well as personal reserves and premium consumables. So feel free to swing by my Twitch stream if you want to pick up what I think is one of the coolest looking styles in the game. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.